The first miracle Jesus did was turn water into wine. A few days after doing this, he went to the temple in Jerusalem. John chapter 2 verses 14 through 16 says, And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers setting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, also the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the money changers' money and overthrew the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away from here. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. After Jesus cleaned the temple, the Jews asked him for a sign, because they saw him clean the temple. John chapter 2, verses 19-21 through 21 says, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, This temple was forty-six years building, and will you rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. Jesus threw out those that defiled the temple as a prophetic act. When the Jews asked him to show a sign for cleaning the temple, he basically told them the temple of God will be the human body, and it has already started in his own body. But they didn't understand this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16-17 through 17 says, Do you not know that you are a temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God shall destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which you are. Now that we establish the temple of God is the human body, let us look at the things that Jesus threw out of the temple in Jerusalem as a sign for us today. For one, he threw out the money changers, which are those that have made money their idol. John chapter 2 verse 16 says, And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away from here. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Why did Jesus specifically call out those that sold doves? Why not those that sold sheep or oxen, since those animals were much bigger? It's because Jesus was giving a prophetic sign, so let's look at this in more detail. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 says, And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. The dove represents the Spirit of God. It's good to have the Spirit of God in the temple, but do not sell the Spirit of God. Jesus does not want the temple of God, which we are, turned into a house of merchandise. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 3 in the English Standard says, And in their greed they will exploit you with false words. The King James says, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Since we are the temple of God, they turn his temple into a place for merchandise. I will now give three examples of turning the temple of God into a place for merchandise that I have personally witnessed. Example 1. If you want your prayer answered, then give an offering along with your prayer request. Example 2. If you want to be ministered to, then pay us first. This is usually in the form of a conference fee, but not limited to it. Example 3. Give an offering today, and you will receive either 30, 60, or 100 times the amount given back to you in return. All of these examples are egregious and contrary to the Word of God. They make you wonder about those that practice them, which brings me to my next point. Luke chapter 16 verses 13 and 14 says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in wealth. And being money lovers, all the Pharisees also heard all these things, and they derided him. There are many in the church today that would be listed as money lovers. Jesus will not receive his church in this condition. So the bride of Christ needs to repent of the idols in the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. So who do you serve in this temple? Do you serve God or wealth? Do you seek God through prayer? Or do you seek the temporary riches of this life? Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 says, 
If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is setting at the right hand of God. Be mindful of things above, not on things on the earth. Jesus kicked out the money changers and dove sellers two times. John chapter 2 gives the first time, and the other three gospels speak of the second time. The account in Matthew will be my focus. Matthew chapter 21 verses 12 through 13 says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all those who sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. The temple of God is supposed to be a house of prayer, which is communication with God, not a place to sell the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is freely given, and we are supposed to freely give. Matthew chapter 10 verse 8 says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. You have freely received, freely give. The temple of God becomes defiled when receiving money for the things that God does with his spirit. Remember, it's not man that heals the sick or casts out demons. It's the spirit of God that does it. Peter and John understood this concept as mentioned in Acts chapter 8 verses 17 through 23, which says, Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that the Holy Spirit was given through laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that on whomever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Therefore repent of this wickedness of yours, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Simon believed in Christ and was even baptized in water by Philip. Simon wanted to buy the Spirit of God so he could turn around and sell it, because his heart was not right. Praise God that Peter told him the truth about the Spirit of God and did not accept his money. Today's church is a different story as mentioned in the parable of the ten virgins. I believe this parable is for today. Part of this parable speaks of those that sell the Spirit of God like Simon wanted to do. Matthew chapter 25 verses 8 and 9 says, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there be not enough for us and you, but rather go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. The wise virgins were mocking the foolish virgins. They knew the foolish virgins' hearts were not right, so they directed them to those that sell the Spirit of God. The oil represents the Spirit of God, which is freely given to those who ask God for it. If the foolish virgins had temples of God full of prayer, then they would have all the oil they needed. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evils, of which some, having lusted after, they were seduced from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The parable of the ten virgins speak of foolish virgins that were defiled temples of God. So the Spirit of God would not stay there. Since the love of money is the root of all evil, we must assume they served wealth instead of God. The love of money is a serious problem in today's church. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23 says, not every one who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and through your name throw out demons, and through your name do many wonderful works? And then I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, those working lawlessness. How sad it will be for those that did things with the Spirit of God, but not for the will of God. They did these acts of the Spirit to obtain wealth. Take this message seriously, because you do not want to end up in this condition. Your body is the temple of God, so start believing it. Start praying more, which is communication with God. 
repent, which is changing your mind, about what God wants in his temple. He wants prayer, not idolatry. Put God back on the throne of your heart and remove any idols in your life. Jesus is coming back soon for his bride, so prepare yourself to meet him. If you enjoyed this message, please subscribe to the Preparing the Bride channel. Thank you.